One of the things that my lab is interested in is in understanding how climate might shape the evolution or the, the expression of insect immune function. Now, some of you might actually know that, that melanin is a critical component of insect immune system. In fact, it, it offers a broad spectrum antibiotic against things like viruses, and protists, and bacteria. And this is really clearly shown in this, this series of photographs where you have this parasitoid wasp um, that's overpositing an egg inside the fly larvae. The, the fly larvae's hemocytes then encapsulate the, the egg and it melanizes it. Uh, and you can see that quite clearly here. Now, the biochemical pathway that's responsible for this uh, uses the enzyme phenyloxidase to, to enact the, the production of melanin. So you start off with tyrosine, get this right, uh, and you end up with melanin. Uh, it's being governed by uh, PO, phenyloxidase, and it produces a variety of toxic intermediates that actually kills the, the invading organism. So, Melanin is not only critical to insect immune function, but it has a variety of different functions throughout uh, insect physiology. Another key aspect is in darkening the insect's cuticle. And researchers uh, for years have shown that insects have been selected in colder environments or in drier environments to have darker cuticles. Uh, and this is to improve desiccation resistance or to improve thermoregulation. And you see this uh, wonderful variation within species in, in cuticle melanin. There. So the pathway responsible for cuticle melanin uh, deposition is essentially the same as for the immune response. Uh, the key enzyme in the immune response, again, was, was PO, phenyloxidase. Well, in the cuticle uh, deposition of melanin, it uses a, a lactase phenyloxidase. Now, that's a, a, a fairly significant difference, but really when you take that difference away, uh, this is what these two pathways share. They share a variety of different substrates and a variety of different enzymes. So these pathways are pleiotropically linked. They're genetically correlated. And this led us to propose the cuticle-dependent immune investment hypothesis, which suggests that any time that you have selection on the cuticle for cuticle color, uh, selection due to crypsis, due to sexual selection, whatever the pressure is, that you're going to get this correlated response in the immune system that might be maladaptive. And so you have these, these insects here that are developing or being selected in a warm or humid environment. They might have reduced immune function. Now, most of us probably don't care about that, but uh, there might be a reason why we should be concerned. And that is that insects that are developing in these environments or that are being selected in, the, in these environments might actually mount an inferior immune response against pathogens that they're vectoring. So you might see that in these warmer environments uh, that disease prevalence increases because the vector is able to transmit more of the pathogen to the host. Uh, this also might be important when we're talking about ecologically important insects, insects that provide uh, ecosystem services. They might become more susceptible to pathogenic infection, things like pollinators. And if that happens, you might have uh, instability within ecosystems or even agricultural. So over the past couple of years, my lab has gained some evidence towards this hypothesis. Uh, we've shown that when you rear insects in either a fall thermal environment or a summer thermal environment, you create insects in a, in a warm environment with lighter cuticles, with less melanin-based immune investment, and a higher susceptibility to pathogenic infection. And we've also shown uh, uh, with crickets, when you look at this latitudinal slide of crickets that vary in their, their thermal regimes, that crickets that come from warmer populations have been selected for lighter cuticles, have been selected for a less robust melanin-based immune system, and are actually more susceptible to pathogenic infection. So there are limitations with these data. When I, when I reared up these, uh, these flies in two different treatments, we had the fall and, and, and the summer thermal treatments, and we tested their immune system in the same environment at 25 degrees Celsius. Now we did that to control for metabolic differences between the treatments. But it might very well be that insects that are in these warmer environments, that they, they do underinvest in their immune system, in their melanin-based immune system. But they might actually get an improved ability to defend against pathogens because
because their metabolic rate increases. So the metabolic, uh, the metabolic rate increase might actually help them to defend against pathogenic infection. And we actually don't know if that's true. So that's one thing that I want to address here is can an increase in metabolic rate with a warmer environment actually help you compensate for this reduced investment in melanin-based immunity? The next thing I want to address is if this has any real-world consequences. I mean, we're doing this in the lab, right? We, we, we see these seasonal shifts in the laboratory, uh, but we haven't really documented it out in the field. And we also haven't documented whether or not it's associated with changes in pathogen prevalence. And last but not least, uh, you know, the, the relationship that we see uh, with, with thermal environment and reduced immune function, uh, we don't know if that's actually due to the thermal environment or if it's due to some other correlates of, of climate. Uh, perhaps that in colder environments, for some reason, uh, for these crickets, you have uh, more pathogens in, in, in the environment. We don't know. So we want to address each of these, uh, if I actually have the time to get through it. Um, do it quickly. So the first thing we want to address is as we increase in seasonal temperatures, will we see that decrease in immune function despite increases in metabolic rates? And to test this hypothesis, we went back to Drosophila, we reared them up in, in a warm, in a cool thermal environment, but this time we tested them with their, within their own environments and then tested them across environments. What we're, and we examined cuticle melanin, phenyloxase activity, which is melanin-based immunity, and we also looked at lytic activity, which is melanin-independent immune function. It's an enzyme that facilitates melanin-independent immune function. This is what we would expect to see. Uh, this is our warm reared environment. This is our, I'm sorry, our cold reared environment, our warm reared environment here. Um, we would expect to see, perhaps uh, like we've seen before, that when you're reared in these warm environments, you have a reduced investment in your melanin-based immune system. But now when you go into warmer environments, you might get a boost in your ability to defend against the pathogen because of an increased metabolic rate. But it might be that still, there's an ultimate cost to, being, to developing or being selected in these warm environments. Um, that's what we're hoping to see. Alternatively, we might see that an increase in metabolic rate really does provide a huge boost to your ability to defend. And so overall, if climates are warming, we don't need to worry about insect immune function because they're gonna create more robust immune systems. To cut to the chase, this is essentially what we saw. Um, we see that uh, insects that are reared in warmer environments do have this decrease of perphenyloxase activity. This is a melanin-based uh, immune enzyme. We do see a decrease in, in investment, and we see no improvement in their ability to potentially defend against pathogen, defend against pathogen in these warmer environments. Uh, we saw, surprisingly, we saw the same trend in lytic activity. We weren't really expecting this. Uh, so something else is going on there that we're not really quite sure of. Now, we did not test an actual pathogen here, and that's because temperature and virulence uh, can be positively correlated or negatively correlated, depending on the pathogen that you're but we really just wanted to get a snapshot of what the host is capable of doing without introducing a replicating pathogen. And we saw, as before, we saw um, reduced cuticular melanin between these two environments. So just to give you a brief summary uh, of this part, uh, when we increased seasonal temperatures, we saw reduced cuticle melanin. We saw a reduced immune potential despite uh, increasing metabolic rate. So the next thing that we wanted to do was to take this out to the field. And we're addressing the same hypothesis again, but we're adding a new one, that a decrease in immunity will actually increase pathogen load and disease transmission rates. To do this, we switched systems. We went to the Asian citrus psyllid, uh, Diaparinia citri, which passes a bacterium that causes citrus greening disease. If you're not familiar with citrus greening disease, it's currently devastating uh, citrus crops worldwide. It might be that in the next 15 years, an ounce of orange juice costs as much as an ounce of gold. Uh, that's how bad the, the impact is. Uh, but we wanted to see if we see the same pattern we see in Drosophila, we see this out in the field in a system that actually has some real impact. And so we examined cuticle melanin, phenyloxase activity, and pathogen load across an entire year. And we, set, we found as temperatures, now this is actually in Orlando, uh, where it's almost always brutally hot. Uh, so, uh, but we did find that in these warm environments, 
uh, we saw lighter cuticles, and in, in the wintertime, in the cooler environment, we saw darker cuticles, and this was also correlated with their epiloxase activity. Again, that enzyme, which is, which is important in the melanin-based immune system. And you've got much less than epiloxase activity, which is predictive of a weaker immune system at warmer temperatures. Now, we also looked at the pathogen load within these guys over time and, and correlated with different climactic variables. Uh, we did not find a significant result, but that's because I think the data aren't in yet. We're, we've only gotten through about a quarter of the data right before the conference, unfortunately, so I apologize for that. But uh, it's a non significant trend, but if you squint your eyes and, you know, trust in fairies, then <laughs> You, you can see sort of a negative relationship here, which is what we would have predicted. Uh, that you have, as, as insects get darker, they should have a more robust melanin-based immune system, and they should have fewer pathogens floating around in their body. And uh, if, this, if this trend turns out to be significant, that would support this hypothesis, and would suggest that as, as climates warm, uh, they're able to, to vector diseases perhaps more prevalently. Um, so just some basic conclusions here. Increased seasonal temperatures, uh, we do see reduced melanin, particular melanin, as we expect, reduced immune potential, and we may see an increase in pathogen. So this is anchoring these laboratory results in the real world, suggesting that we might have uh, an important issue here with, with insects with regard to climate change. Uh, the last thing I want to address is um, if thermal selection can actually create a reduced uh, evolutionary response and to do this, we had two treatments. We had a climate change treatment. Whoops. We had a climate change treatment that uh, that increased temperature over 24 generations from the year 2015 to the year 2090 using uh, predictions. We had a control treatment, uh, and we did the same thing. We looked at melanin activity or particular melanin geo activity and so forth. I know I'm almost out of time, so let me just run through this. Um, after 24 generations, unfortunately, we did not see a response in cuticle time. The reason for that is, it turns out that we actually also decreased relative humidity. So I think we had two competing selective pressures going on in there. Uh, increased heat, reduced uh, um, relative humidity, sort of canceled each other out. We also didn't see any change in immune function, and in, in potential immune function with these enzymes, both PO activity and lytic activity. But we did see, at least in males, a decline in their ability to defend against pathogens. So these data do suggest, even though we don't see uh, the response to cuticle or immunity, we do see that males are less able to defend against pathogens from the climate change treatment. So again, these, these are preliminary data as well, and get to all the data before the conference. But just to summarize all of this, uh, we basically show that when insects are reared up in warmer environments, they have reduced immune systems, the metabolic rate, the increased metabolic rate doesn't compensate. Uh, that they might actually vector in more pathogens. Hopefully we'll get definitive evidence on that in the next couple of weeks. And that when you select for these guys in, in warmer thermal environments, they do respond with weaker immune systems. And this might have dramatic implications for climate change over the next 20, 30, 50, 100 years. Uh, and with that, I have a moment, I think.